The world is witnessing a magnificent spectacle these nights. This is that time of the year when the Earth's atmosphere witnesses meteor showers called the Perseid meteor showers and it is said to peak between 12th and 13th of August. So if you missed it last night, you can watch out for it tonight. So in this video, I will tell you a bit about these meteor showers and I will show you what Allah has mentioned about meteor showers in the Quran. This is another science versus religion video. So hold on to your seats and let us get right into the action. Welcome to Pale Blue Thoughts, the channel which promotes scientific temper and debunks pseudoscience. Meteor showers happen when the debris left behind by comets or asteroids burn up in the Earth's atmosphere. The Perseids are a prolific meteor shower associated with the comet Swift Tuttle. Swift Tuttle is a comet that makes an orbit around the Sun once in 133 years. I have done a couple of videos on comets and meteors which I will link up in the description box for you to watch later and get to know more about these things in the sky. As Swift Tuttle made its way around the Sun, it dropped debris from its tail in its path. Now when the Earth approaches these debris, they get pulled in by the Earth's gravity and they fall down towards the center of the Earth. Now due to friction of the Earth's atmosphere and ionization of the particles, as they rush us through the air molecules, they evaporate and appear as light balls in the sky which we call as meteors or shooting stars. The Perseid meteor shower is one of the favorites for sky watchers because you might be able to see between 60 to 100 meteors in an hour at its peak. You will not need any special equipment like a telescope or even any special skills to watch it. But you will need a clear sky with no light pollution. I know it's hard to come by in most Indian cities but if you're lucky you can witness this spectacle tonight. If you really want to find a place with less light pollution you can check out the interactive light pollution map whose links I will put in the description box below. Once you're on the map, zoom into your location and look for places with low light pollution. Then use Google Maps to figure out which would be the most convenient for you to travel to. After doing all that, once you reach a relatively dark location, find a comfortable place to sit down and view the meteors or maybe even lie down. If you look towards the northeast direction on the sky, you will see a constellation named Perseus. You can use a sky navigating app on your phone like Skyview Light, Sky Map, Stellarium, Night Sky, Star Tracker, etc. The links to which are in the description box below. It will help you search for this constellation and will help you spot it. The meteors are called the Perseids because they appear from the general direction of the constellation Perseus. After midnight, you should be able to spot these streaking across the sky. One another thing in favor of sky gazers this time is that the other light source in the sky which can make these things difficult to spot which is the moon is at a waning crescent stage so there would be less light from it. Last year these showers happened during the full moon which made this nearly impossible to see because of the light from the moon. Today we have the technology to track the precise orbits of comets and also know when we can expect a meteor shower and what would be the approximate number of meteors that we can see in an hour during those particular days. But was this the case 1400 years ago? No. The humans had no clue what these falling balls of flames were. But one person ought to have known about it. The God who created these things. Now what has he written about it? Well, in the Quran, Allah has mentioned about meteors and so has his prophet Muhammad in his hadiths. According to a hadith by Sahih Muslim, the Prophet Muhammad was sitting one night with some of his companions when suddenly a shooting star fell giving a dazzling light. He asked what the people used to say in the pre-Islamic days when there was such a meteor shot. The companions replied that they used to say that that very night either a great man had been born or a great man had died. However, the Prophet said that those meteors were shot neither at the death of anyone nor on the birth of anyone. Now if he had stopped there, things would have been fine. However, he continued to state that Allah often calls his angels or malaks to hold counsel and discuss the future of humans. Now the jinns or the devils like to eavesdrop into these conversations to get news about the future of humans and they would rush back with what they heard and would pass it on to the non-believers, fortune tellers, sorcerers and astrologers on earth who would use that news to predict the future of humans. 
just like paparazzis or news reporters stand outside gyms and houses of celebrities to see if they can get a peek at the celebrities and capture some candid moments in their cameras. Exactly like that. So when Allah sees the eavesdropping jinns, he would take the stars and throw it at them. In fact, in the Quran, it says that Allah has created stars for making the sky look wonderful, to find our way during the night and for throwing it at jinns. Al-Bukhari, Muslim and Ibn Majah who wrote tafsirs of the Quran have mentioned the same things in their interpretations of the Quran. Take a look at these. Today with the help of modern science, we know what these shooting stars are and we can even predict them. We know that these meteors are not stars but dust, rock and ice from the tails of comets. However, many people still hold on to their religious beliefs adamantly. So for them, tonight is the night when Allah would be holding probably the largest meeting of angels post-Covid and the jinns would once again rush to catch the conversation and Allah and his malaks would take stars and planets and throw it at poor Iblis. So for people who believe in these fairy tales, tonight is the night when Iblis is going to get stoned a lot. You may laugh at me saying, would people in these modern era believe in these stories? My reply would be, oh yes, there are millions who would blindly believe what is written in their holy books without pausing to consider any kind of logic or reason. That is what the malware called religion does when it is fed into the brains of humans. Islamic scholars and apologetics vehemently try to whitewash such sentences in the Quran. However, this one is bound to be a failed attempt. There are no loopholes left to whitewash this scientific fact in the Quran. A lot of my subscribers have asked me to do videos on how scientific facts are interpreted as being already mentioned in their holy books. This is a perfect example of how scientific facts are stuffed into the Quran and how it is painted to appear scientific. This unscientific fact which is mentioned in the text throws a dark shadow on the claim that this book makes about itself that this book was written by God and was sent down to the earth through the prophet for educating the humans. There are many more such unscientific facts mentioned in the holy books of all religions which clearly indicates that all these are stories written by man and not from any supreme being. Had it been from an all-knowing creator, these mistakes shouldn't appear in the books. These texts contain the incorrect facts and knowledge of humans from that pre-scientific period and hence would contain a lot of wrong information about the things around us. Today we have managed to understand reality better all thanks to science. So my endeavor would be to continue exposing the unscientific facts in religious scriptures as and when I get time. It is time that people start to develop a scientific temper and embrace logic and reason instead of verses in books which are well past their sell by dates. If you support me, subscribe and share this video. I hope you like this video. Do let me know your thoughts on the comment section as usual. I have joined hands with a friend who would edit my videos for me in future and would make it more appealing with animations. So please look forward for more entertaining videos on this channel. I shall be back soon with yet another scientific temper promoting video. Until then, it's bye bye from Pale Blue Thoughts.